Okay. <laughs> Here. Well, it looks like looks like we're on live, Sarah. Hello. Hello. I'm trying something new, people. It's 2020. <laughs> if we wanted to have different results, we have to try different things. And uh, I'm trying new technology, <laughs> which, which if you've been following me for a long time, you always know I start with a little blurb about how technical, te technologically unsavvy I am. Um, yes, welcome. Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, I'm so happy to be back. We, we stopped doing our doula dialogues uh, a little while back and I'm so happy to be back today. Uh, today's topic, super interesting, becoming a single mother by choice. And uh, Dr. Sarah Roberts, a psychologist in Montreal is joining me. Uh, we both work at the same clinic, I guess work out of the same clinic uh, here in Montreal. And she's going to tell us a little bit about her story as a single mom by choice, uh, the work she does. She has a wonderful workshop coming up uh, in um, a week from Saturday, the 25th. And we're going to bust some of the myths today about who are these single women, who are these women, not even single, but who are these women choosing them, you know, becoming a single mom. We're going to be talking about uh, the options that you have if this is something you're considering and uh, talk about the challenges that uh, perhaps Sarah has faced and the people in her community have faced as well. So that is it. If you are watching us on Facebook, I'm going to, I'm monitoring you by um, on another screen here. So do pop in, say hello, tell us if you're on. If you have questions for me, for Sarah, uh, please post them in the uh, in the group because I am uh, monitoring that. So, uh, so yes, welcome, welcome, Sarah. So happy to have you. Thanks for inviting me, Sylvia. Ah, I'm happy that you could that we made it happen and so quickly, mm -hmm. right before your workshop. I'm uh, I'm happy. So tell me, you've created this workshop based on your own experience as a single mom by choice, single mother by choice. Yeah, I'd say the workshop is based on my experience as a single mom by choice and also my experience as a psychologist. Um, so my thought is that having the professional expertise and the personal experience um, made it make sense to put these two things together to present a workshop. Um, one of the things that I noticed every time I told somebody that I was a single mother by choice is they said, oh, my my sister should talk to you or my cousin or my colleague, everybody seemed to know someone who had kind of thought about this, but didn't really know anyone else who had done it and could really use someone to talk to or a group of someone's to talk to. Um, so that was, yeah, you go ahead. No, I was just going to say yes. In my circles, we have uh, some cousins in the family. Some friends of mine have gone this route as well. And we, we do, uh, we do think of different people who have mentioned it, but perhaps don't go you know, uh, don't know where to look. So I think today, some of the, you're going to talk about some additional resources uh, that, mm -hmm. pe you know, people who are interested. Uh, a little, I don't know, you know, you said you, what about your story? You know, how, how old is your uh, child now? Uh, my daughter is going to be three in April. Three, ah, oh, the threes. Sir. Getting, <laughs> out of that, getting out of that, uh, the, the toddler, <laughs> the terrible twos, but you know, mm -hmm. three, I don't know if that's better. <laughs> who knows what will happen? Exactly, exactly. And did you find you were lacking resources when uh, you were deciding on this, on becoming a Right. Um, I'd say yes. Um, at the time that I was doing research and looking into this as something I might do, I only knew one other person who had actually done it. And that person proved to be a really valuable resource for me, but also she was one person who had done one thing her way. Um, about a year or two after having my daughter, I became a member of an international Facebook group of almost 7,000 single mothers by choice. Wow. And it's an exceptional resource. And there are so many women there who have done what I've done and a ton of people who are kind of thinking about it and have questions. And it's exceptionally valuable to have a group of 7,000 people that you can <laughs> ask your questions to about trying to conceive or trying to adopt, about dealing with friends or family members' reactions, um, or even about practical things like finances or childcare. 
Um, so I guess one of the ideas of the workshop is to create community, which mm -hmm. wasn't something I really had. I had a wonderful community of my own friends and family, but not of other women who had made or were considering making the same choice as me. Let's, before we get into the topics that you're gonna cover and the challenges you face, let's talk about who are these women, right? Because mm -hmm. I think a lot of, there's a stereotype, you know, stereotypical idea that these are women who are reaching 40 and haven't found that special someone, they don't have a partner mm -hmm. and decide to do this on their own. But in our discussions, we were saying, no, that is not, you know, that is not necessarily the case. So who mm -hmm. are you meeting? Who's in that group? You know, who yeah. are these women? I'm glad you're asking and bringing up the, the kind of stereotype it's not crazy to think that single mothers by choice might be on average a bit older than women having children in a more mm -hmm. typical setup. And I'd say partly because it takes a while to come around to this idea and to figure out like how and what you're doing. Um, so there might be a few extra years there where you're kind of thinking about it. Yeah. Um, but I certainly don't think it's fair to say that everybody is like a 40 year old who couldn't find a partner. <laughs> right, um, I mean, that's not, Anyway, well, I won't go there. But yes, that's true. <laughs> we think that that's the first, you know, the first idea. One of the things I've noticed in the group is the wide um, range in people's ages, um, in people's uh, location geographically, like people from all over the world, rural areas, cities, anything in between. Um, and in terms of people's reasons for becoming single mothers by choice, there are women who would have preferred to meet someone mm -hmm. um, and for whatever reason didn't. But there are also a number of women in their 20s or early 30s who for, again, a wide range of reasons are not available or not interested in a more traditional setup, and but extremely interested in having children. So it's kind of a no brainer in that case. Mm -hmm. uh, you were mentioning also that we often think of uh, this route going through, say, fertility clinics. But what are the options when, you know, what are some of the options that women have? It's not just going to a fertility clinic and finding a donor. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also adoption you were talking mm -hmm. about. Yeah. yeah, and later I think we'll probably talk about some celebrity examples, but we all can probably think off the top of our heads of a few celebrities who adopted kids on their own. Yeah, um, let's but talk I'd say about the, them now. Who are they? Let's who talk about they? them now. now. Um, <laughs> Diane Keaton, for one. Okay. Um, Cheryl Crow, Sandra Bullock. Um, Lucy Liu, Angelina Charlie, Jolie, Angelina Charlize Jolie, Theron, yeah, like the poster child for uh, for what? adopting on her own or with a partner. Yes. Um, so adoption is certainly an option. Um, using a sperm donor is mm. an option, whether it's an anonymous donor from a sperm bank or a known donor, which is like a friend or an acquaintance or someone from your community. I'd right. say those are the three main options that I'm familiar with or that I see. Mm -hmm. in, uh, in the group that I'm a part of. Right. Wonderful. Uh, yes. Yeah, so in terms of some of the, well, and it gets to me, I think we, we, we discussed it is the, the rise in the number of women, like that's a, that's a large group, you know, and I don't mm -hmm. say 20 years ago, maybe that wasn't so prevalent. Uh, I think the celebrities have maybe uh, you know, allowed it to be spoken about. We're mm -hmm. not hiding it anymore. The rise of social media and uh, the rise of fertility clinics. Yeah, so it's not my, ex the, the kind of epidemiology of it is not my expertise, but I think the rise of fertility clinics is probably part of it. Mm -hmm. um, if it were 40 years ago and you wanted to have a child on your own, you might need to find, um, a sperm donor within your community or try to adopt on your own. Um, now, someone who wishes to conceive on her own can get a referral from her GP and go to a fertility clinic and be treated as easily as any uh, more traditional couple that's having a fertility problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you find um, that there are region, regions where this is easier? I'm just thinking Canada versus US, for example. That I don't know. Um, in addition to the international group that I'm a part of, there's also a Canadian group and a local Montreal group um, that I am part of both of those as well. What I do notice is that the women in the US and in other places outside Canada are talking a lot about the price of childcare as a barrier and how are they going, what are they going to do when they have to go to work. 
And as you know, here in Quebec, there's subsidized daycare and in Canada, subsidized daycare. Yeah. So that's a big thing that comes up that maybe differentiates um, the options for women in Quebec or Canada versus the US or other parts of the world. That said, there really are people from all over the world um, in the international group that I'm part of. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the stats I was looking at, Sarah, were uh, from the CDC. They were saying that between 2007 and 2012, there was an increase of 48% of mm. single moms by choice between the ages of 35 and 39, and a 29% increase, same dates, uh, between, uh, after 40, 40 to 44. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, those are, you know, legit stats. So we can mm -hmm. see that this is, uh, this is on the, it's on the rise. It's on the mm -hmm. rise. It's good that we have uh, more options for families. Right. Nowadays. So what are some of the challenges? And I know you're going to talk about the workshop uh, later. She'll give, you know, she'll give you the, uh, Sarah will give you the details uh, later, but some of the challenges you mentioned childcare, I would imagine is a big one. Uh, mm -hmm. If you do not have support around you, that is going to be so difficult. Mm -hmm. So I'd say most of the challenges are the same ones that any parents face, but perhaps um, you need to think about it a little bit more. There's no one else to take care of your kid if you're sick. So who's yeah. going to take care of your kid if you're sick? What if your kid is sick? What if you lose your job? What's your financial situation? Um, do you have a supportive network of friends? family, people that are gonna be there when you need them. Um, similarly, I mean, I know you work with new moms all the time, so yeah. I bet you're encouraging people to find a community, but I would encourage it even Definitely. more in the case that you are gonna be um, raising a kid on your own. Yes, and, and tell us a little bit about the Montreal group that you're with. Do you see, is it only online or have you forged relationships with, the, with other women around and help mm -hmm. each other out when needed? Um, the, so the Facebook group is obviously online and people do um, forge friendships outside the group and get together with women who live nearby or who don't live nearby and their occasional events for like Mother's Day or holidays or yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. And what about other challenges? I would think uh, finances, perhaps? Yeah, again, same as for any family, any but um, perhaps something you want to be even more careful about because you are the sole breadwinner and the sole person who's going to support the family. Yes, yes, definitely. But um, really, Sylvia, I'd say the biggest challenge was just not knowing anyone else, not knowing anyone besides this one person who had done it, who could just tell me like, what is it really going to be like? Yeah, so hence, you know, wanting to help others in that situation, uh, in your case, uh, mm -hmm. what will you be talking about? Your workshop is on the, the 25th. What will you be talking about? Mm -hmm. um, thanks for asking. I'm, I'm planning to divide the material into some of the practical factors people might want to think about, some of the ones we've already named in terms of finances, childcare, work, um, community, where you're living. Um, but then to use my role as a psychologist to talk about some of the psychological factors and some of the ones that I'm kind of thinking about are um, preparedness to deal with other people's reactions, even other people's just like curiosity, but also other people's disapproval, um, other people's disowning you as a friend, it's a thing that can happen. Um, so just um, kind of preparing for the social impact of your choice um, I'm going to talk a bit about um, kind of inquires to how people are feeling or if there's any level of any level of grief surrounding the decision because it's an exciting and important decision but if it wasn't your plan a how do you feel about your plan about going into your plan b you know if your right. original thought was that you might conceive or grow a family with a partner and now you're making this exciting decision to do it on your own yes it's exciting but also you might have some feelings about the original plan. Yeah, you're giving it up in, in mm -hmm. a certain way. It doesn't mean, it, yes, it doesn't mean it still won't happen necessarily, but mm -hmm. yes, I can understand that. I, uh, I, yeah, and I don't think, I mean, I am with a partner and I have three kids and it, that social aspect to it of being judged as a, as a, you know, a mom with a partner, I don't, you know, we don't have to go through that. So I would think mm -hmm. that's quite, uh, uh, it would be quite heavy. That's a heavy part of it, a heavy. So I've been lucky and haven't experienced 
much judgment that I know about. I don't know about the judgment I don't know about. Um, but there is just the constant question of like, who's your kid's dad? Is your dad, is her dad coming for daycare pickup or what are your daycare teachers going to send home on Father's Day with some like weird Father's Day art? Or do you want to talk to them about your situation? Just like things that you might not think about that will come up. And I don't intend to really go into the nitty gritty about that at the workshop. Mm -hmm. Like someone who's just thinking about this choice doesn't need to think about Father's Day art four years from right now. now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they do need to think about um, what kind of reaction they might receive from the people around them. And I guess another psychological factor I intend to talk about a bit is just the relationship to singleness. Like, so, you know, for a given person, is being single a source of joy, a source of pride, or is it a source of disappointment, a source of sadness? Um, because it may be, if you find yourself being a single mother by choice, that you might feel even more single than you did before when you're, for example, if you're at a prenatal class and everybody else is in a couple, or if you're at a daycare Christmas party and everybody else is in a couple. So it's worth thinking about what is your relationship to being single and how is that going to play out for you in the event that you become a single mother by choice? Yes. As a psychologist, uh, do you uh, talk about preparing ahead of time? I mean, this workshop is part of it. Mm -hmm. uh, but for women to perhaps see you privately or another psychologist privately uh, mm -hmm. on this journey, on this, you know, while they're getting prepared? It's never, I mean, I always say it's never a bad idea for anybody to for see anyone. a psychologist, <laughs> ever, anyone, ever, any <laughs> regardless. Parent, actually, any parent, anyone who <laughs> you don't know what yeah. you're getting into. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I'd be really happy to work with any women who wanted to see me privately um, about this particular thing. It's happened once or twice, but really just by coincidence. Mm. Um, I know that women who conceive on their own through fertility clinics, and I think actually anybody, whether in a couple or single, that uses donor sperm or donor eggs is required to see a psychologist at the wow. clinic before doing so, just to talk a bit about, I don't know, how they feel about reproductive technology, how they feel about using mm. um, donor eggs or sperm. So many women who are conceiving in that way or who are conceiving versus adopting will have access to a psychologist mm. um, necessarily. Yes, yeah. Yeah, I honestly go back. Yeah, every parent, <laughs> every parent, every couple. <laughs> every it's person. Hard, it's hard bringing children into the world. In my prenatal classes, uh, we do talk about that and, you know, just even how the couple's going to change and nothing stays the same. And it's the same. I, you know, if you don't have a partner, I uh, just know there, you just have, there are additional factors mm -hmm. uh, to weigh in, uh, definitely. Uh, and having, having, you know, other support, I think would be super, super important. Mm -hmm. uh, having that, you know, someone that you can call <laughs> to come mm -hmm. over and, and wipe your brow if you're sick uh, and, and baby's sick. Yeah. Like a doula slash psychologist. Yeah, doula. That's right. Well, nowadays, I mean, we've got uh, doulas. Uh, uh, I mean, parents and families are being formed all different kinds of ways. And we have their doulas that, you know, for couples, but uh, for single parents, we have a lot of them in our practice as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but fertility doulas as well, you know, people on their journey, uh, um, you know, where we were talking about grief before and that, that journey where, oh, they're now going to fertility clinics that change, mm -hmm. yeah, changes everything. There's, so there is, there are doulas for everybody, doulas mm -hmm. for everybody, but, um, oh, wonderful. So what, to, what would you say about, um, yeah, what, I mean, you are going to have your workshop, but here online, no, you know, what would be some advice that you would give to, to someone who's weighing her options? Mm -hmm. uh, come to my workshop is the number <laughs> one advice. <laughs> um, you know, even in the workshop, I'm going to limit the amount of advice, specific advice I give. Um, because even though I'm a psychologist and a single mother by choice, I am, I have one, my sample size is one when it comes to be a single mother by choice. Um, I didn't adopt, I didn't there, you know, I only did one thing. And so I don't wish to say, you need to make sure you do this. You need to make sure you do that, except in the big themes of like, you need to make sure you think about your finances, like think about who's your community, but not yeah. you need to have X amount in the bank or you need to have right. next door to your best friend. No, because it'll be different for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I really want the workshop to be a place for just for people to form a community and to talk about this thing. That's like such a huge decision 
and maybe they don't know other people who are thinking about it um, or have other supportive people around them. So really the first point of the workshop is to provide a space for this. Mm. Yeah, definitely. I, I, it's the first I've heard of it, uh, though I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm in the birth community. So this is a, a lovely add-on, a lovely, mm -hmm. lovely add-on. And I'm so happy to, uh, to promote it. Um, January 25th, it's on Saturday. What are the times? Uh, it's 9.30 to noon at the Connect noon. Clinic in Westmount. In Westmount. So uh, we'll put some links in the, uh, in the comments with the, uh, the page on the Connect page. Is there a price? What's the, $60. Uh, Tax dollars. Wonderful place to start your community. I think uh, sometimes we are not offered that opportunity to um, prepare for our pregnancies. Uh, in this case, single moms have lots of preparation or, or not always, I guess they, they don't always, but some pregnancies or through. yeah. They sorry, I'm just going to add pregnancies or whatever way a kid comes to you versus adoption or anything else. That's right. That's yeah. right. Motherhood, I guess, preparing for motherhood. Exactly. I know mm. I prepared greatly for my first and then my third, I was, she, she was not, <laughs> she, she was not planned, but <laughs> a surprise. Um, but yes, <laughs> if, definitely. If you have questions, put them in the, uh, in the comments and Sarah and I will look at them, uh, look at them uh, today. And yeah, I'd be happy to answer questions. Come to her workshop. If this is something that you're interested in pursuing, uh, it was wonderful chatting with you. Uh, is there anything else that you'd like to add before we close off? Any additional resources that might, well, you mentioned the Facebook group. Um, I would add a couple of things. One is that for the workshop, anyone is welcome, whether they have a baby on the way or are halfway through their adoption paperwork or never heard of this thing before, but are kind of intrigued by it. It doesn't really matter where you are on your path to thinking about this thing, you're welcome. Hmm. Um, in terms of resources, I will give the names of a couple of books that I read at the time that I was just starting to kind of do a bit of research about this. Um, they're a bit dated, but they were wildly helpful for me anyway. Um, one is called Single Motherhood by Choice, A Thinking Woman's Guide, and it's written by a woman named Mickey Morissette, um, who is a founder, one of the founders of one of the Single Mothers by Choice organizations based out of the US. Um, and the other was called, was more of a more of like a funny book, but still about a true story called Knock Yourself Up. Yeah. And the author was, her name is Louise Sloan. And I would oh, also I'll add that there is, so in addition to the three Facebook groups I mentioned, the international, Canadian and local, um, there's Choice Moms. Yeah, it's choicemoms.net or .org. You'll find it if you look up Choice Moms and singlemothersbychoice.org. Yeah, maybe we groups. can put the, the links in the comments. Yes, after. good idea. Yeah. There are groups that have like forums so you can interact with other people, um, lists of resources from anything from like how to do this to what to say to your kids when they're teenagers and want to understand what you did, et cetera. Yes, I mean, right now you're preparing them for uh, on their about their options. And then there are probably like tons of workshops afterwards also for single moms by choice and raising their kids and the yeah. messaging and how do mm -hmm. we bring that up? Uh, uh, you know, when your child starts asking questions, uh, but it's part of the course. Huh? And there are already some resources for that, like books to read your yeah. kid about their mm -hmm. uh, method of conception or about adoption. You know, same for a kid in a more traditional setup yeah. who was adopted or whose parents use exactly. reproductive fertility. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Well, thank you so much, Sarah. It was a lovely, Sylvia, lovely thank you. chatting with you. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, congratulations on putting this workshop together. Uh, thank you. It's, um, a, it's lovely that we're offering families so many more choices these days. And your work that you do is super important, uh, spreading the word. Uh, thank you, everyone who's been on watching and who'll watch in the replay. Uh, thanks for joining us. Next week, I'll be talking to Natasha Hayden, who is a chiropractor specializing in the Webster technique. Uh, and she helps uh, moms, uh, oh, parents, uh, yeah, during pregnancy with treatments, as well as postpartum, as well as kids. So we're going to talk about when to go and see your chiropractor, which is uh, super important. Uh, thanks again, Sarah. And Thank you. I wish you all a lovely weekend. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye.